Hi, it's Mr. Mac, and in our second video in our series on space, we need to ask the question about the Earth's rotation and what causes day or night. Welcome to Mr. Mac's physics channel. He can explain things really well and is a lot of fun to watch. Let's start by asking the question, what causes the repeating pattern of day and night? Many years ago, people thought that we lived on a flat Earth, so they thought that the Sun, Moon, stars and planets went around the Earth. Even when people knew that the Earth was really the shape of a ball, most people continued to think that the Earth was the centre of the universe and everything revolved around it, as you can see in this diagram, with Earth as the centre, Moon revolving around the Earth, Mercury and Venus and then the other planets, with stars fixed in place at the outside. Well, today we know that the Earth is the shape of a ball from photos from satellites as the one shown. Also, when there is a lunar eclipse, the Earth's shadow casts a curved shadow on the Moon. There is also the fact that the hull of a sailing ship or yacht disappears first as the sailing boat goes further away and it disappears behind the horizon. Now this is from our perspective and we know from our perspective that our day and night is caused by the rotation of the Earth. But is that always how it's been seen? So what does the Bible say? Now some people reject the Bible due to its apparently false statements that it contains. For example, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 5, it says the sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. And as we look at that statement, we know that it's not due to the sun actually rising or the sun actually setting. This literal reading is not correct, since we know that the earth rotates on its axis with the sun shining on it. So what do we do with a verse like this in the Bible? Well, when we read through the, this verse in context, we find that it was written by one man called Koheleth, or simply the teacher. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes deliberately from his own perspective. So from his perspective, the sun appears to rise and appears to set. This is true for us too. From our point of view, the sun appears to rise in the morning. This does not contradict the fact that Earth rotation causes daytime and nighttime. Science does not disprove the truth we find in the Bible. Instead, as we read the Bible carefully and we allow for different styles and genres and perspectives, we see that the two, science and the Bible, actually match together. We have strong evidence that our Earth rotates on its axis. The first being in 1736, a man called Pierre-Louis Moreau de Maupertuis went to Lapland to measure the length of one degree of arc of the meridian. Now, this was to settle a debate about the shape of the Earth. Some thought it was like a skinny egg spinning on the long axis, like the picture on the left. Others thought it was a flatter shape. Uh, now, Maupertuis did the measurements and determined that the shape of Earth to be more squashed with a bulge around the equator. This gives evidence to show that Earth was in fact spinning, rotating about an axis. A second piece of evidence that we can observe today is the fact that low pressure storms rotate different ways in the northern and southern hemispheres. In the Northern Hemisphere, hurricanes and typhoons, as they are called, they're both very powerful storms that circulate around a centre of low air pressure, always rotate anti-clockwise. But in the Southern Hemisphere, powerful storms centred around a centre of low air pressure called cyclones always rotate clockwise. Now, if the Earth was not rotating, then storms would be both clockwise and anti-clockwise randomly in both hemispheres. And this is also evidence that the Earth rotates on its axis. Now, the third piece of evidence comes from Sir Isaac Newton, who suggested that we can measure the rotation of Earth on its axis 
by dropping a ball from a very high tower near the equator. And as it fell, Earth would rotate underneath, causing the ball to miss a point vertically under its release point. We can see this today. Many people have successfully measured this difference. But you need a really tall tower. In 1851, Jean Bernard Léon Foucault found a proof that could easily be repeated and didn't require any tall towers. He hung a huge metal ball from a string and carefully let it swing like a pendulum. It was free to swing in any direction, but initially it just swings back and forth in one plane. The ceiling is attached to the earth, which keeps rotating. Since the ball has inertia, it will only swing due to Earth's gravity. Slowly, the path of the pendulum that it traces changes, and from the perspective of Foucault and his audience standing in the hall, it looked as though the pendulum's swing was turning clockwise. The change in the direction that the pendulum swings is due to something called the Coriolis effect. The pendulum swing didn't change by much, but as time passed and the Earth kept rotating, of course, its orientation changed more and more. Now, Foucault started this in his basement, then he showed it to fellow scientists at the Paris Observatory, and then he hung it, a 67 metre pendulum, from the dome in the Pantheon to show the public. And everyone could now see a simple demonstration of the Earth's rotation with their own eyes. Placing the pendulum over a bed of sand showed a trace of the pendulum's path over time and how it changed. And this is very important evidence showing us that Earth is rotating on its own axis. Further evidence is shown by the fact that a pendulum changes 360 degrees in one day if it is at the North Pole or the South Pole. At Paris, where Foucault did his experiments, it changes only 270 degrees in 24 hours since it is at a latitude of 49 degrees north above the equator. A pendulum on the equator does not change its direction at all. Here's an animation showing Foucault's pendulums at different latitudes. Now, just as the Earth rotates on its axis, other planets in our solar system also rotate they rotate at different speeds. For instance, Mercury rotates more slowly than Earth, with one rotation taking nearly 59 Earth days to complete. Jupiter, however, Jupiter takes only about 10 hours to spin once on its axis. So we can conclude and verify that our planet Earth rotates on its axis, giving us day and night when the sun shines on different parts of the Earth. Here are a list of some sources that I've used in the making of this video. The cartoons are original. So we've seen how the Earth rotates on its axis. That gives us daytime and nighttime as the Earth rotates with the sun shining. We need to then look at how do we measure time when we're dealing with space. That's in our next video. I'm Mr. Mac. Thanks for watching.